Welcome back everybody here after what was an extended break with a custom way to keep you entertained in the middle of it. We are here for our semi-final number two ESL1 Frankfurt 2016 is what these teams are trying to qualify for. Vega Squadron going up against Team Spirit. We've had an all-out CIS affair. Our first affair was short, it was brief, and it was savage. Yeah, VP really surprised me with that one. I think it surprised Zone everyone. Time. I did not expect them to be able to uh, to do so damn well <laughs> against Navi. So who do you expect to do well in this series? Well, you know, because I I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here and go. You know what? I really enjoyed watching Team Spirit play about two weeks ago. Cast a lot of their games during the EC mm -hmm. uh, qualifiers. They had a lot of cool things that were happening. They had a lot of good timings, and then there was a moment and the moment would normally come around 25 minutes to 30 minutes in and they would try and force high ground before they were ready to do so mm -hmm. and the game was lost Vega squad they, yes. could, they couldn't regain momentum this kept, this, kept ha this kept happening Radiant team. and then uh, you'll have one game where it works perfectly like they wait just a little bit longer they get their perfect timing the perfect items and then all of a sudden they win that's the type of team spirit I'd like to see tonight yeah, the last time these two teams faced up against each other, Vega Squadron did win 3-0, but Team Spirit has been on a little bit of a winning spree this week. They've won four different matches, none of them against um, overly like super strong teams or anything like that, but um, they, they beat Empire, they beat um, No Diggity, who obviously won the uh, Epicenter Qualifier. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that, last night? Yeah. Yeah. They they won the epicenter qualifier last night, so you could classify that as one of the stronger like um, stronger Ten tier two teams. I'm gonna say like tier two team is a team that has to go through a qualifier. Yes, it's my classification. I, for I think it'll be fine to call them a top tier two. Yeah, because then because then that separates like Liquid and um, Team Secret time. and OG. Yes. So that that's probably like one of the top tier two teams you could face up against. So I guess that's a, a pretty pretty big win, um, but. Otherwise, the, the other teams that they faced up against are not really that notable. They're just kind of like, okay, you know, like a win against Empire right now. That's okay. A win against Adfinum, you know, considering they've actually been doing pretty well for themselves. You know, that's okay. They may not be the biggest names, um, but, you know, they're pretty good skill. Um, I, I, you mentioned it, Toby. Um, you said that when you watched a little bit of the Starladder game, that um, Vega that Vega Squadron won three zero. You said that Iceberg had a really hard time with his uh, with his lane. It's it's funny because like most of the time, like I would say the opposite. Like I've seen Iceberg crap over everyone. Like I saw Iceberg beat an OD with a puck. Iceberg like, is very hit and miss. I think as uh, yeah. as a mid, he's I think very momentum based. Like he's also very remain. reliant on the movement of the rest of Team Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just like the he's success of the supports. I'm actually looking more towards Funic and the type of hero that he gets to play. <sighs> if it is something like the Bat Rider, for example, I, he has so much more influence in the lane. Iceberg will sometimes Radiant just team. straight out win the mid lane. Uh, based off your skill, his harassment, and they'll probably find a first spot with the help of the Earth Spirit. He's probably going to have a better chance of that. But if the first ganks don't happen, I'm worried Team Spirit will be forced into this very passive kind of style up against Vega, who are now having a lot of save, a lot of damage, and a lot of control mm -hmm. arriving from their heroes. And a lot of early pressure as well, not just this we wait a little bit and then we come online. Yeah. Ten seconds. Yeah, I like, um, I like Vega Squadron's opening a lot. When Furion Five and Lone Druid are remain. both banned out of the pool, I think they get one of the most valuable offlaners you can and one of the most Reserve valuable time. dual offlanes you can in the Beastmaster Enchantress. And then they just picked up the Oracle, denying it from Team Spirit, as sometimes teams like to pick up Oracle against Beastmaster, but also it's a good hero against Batrider. Right, so it yep. serves this kind of like dual function. It protects their lineup. It it's, uh, seems to be a support that is rising in popularity um, in various regions. I, I've seen it in the East. I've seen it here in Europe. Uh, I don't know about North America, but um, it does seem to be rising in popularity. Maybe the maybe the meta is slowing down enough to make Oracle work. Maybe it just counters enough of these aggressive heroes that it's a, a value pick. But mm -hmm. um, Team Spirit will have to think about some other offlaner now, as you mentioned, because the Batrider would have been, I think, the go-to hero third pick here for Team Spirit. 
until they saw that uh, that Oracle pickup. So they're going to go for the Sven for now. Not a very valuable carry against an Enchantress. No, it's not. And I'm wondering why they're also picking it up here in the third position. Like you could have waited a little Five bit longer for that to see what Vega is going to run. Because right now you know they're two supports and they're off laner. You don't understand Reserve who their safe time. laner is. You don't understand who their mid laner is. I think in a way that this is buying themselves a bit of time. Um, where they know like this event is just valuable kind of no matter what. It's always going to be a pretty good carry. Um, and, you know, they probably figure Vega Squadron are likely to consider picking up a Sven themselves. So better to just grab it now and theorize a little bit more about what kind of offlane they, they can run in this kind of situation. There really is not too many heroes left. They may have to get, run something uh, a lot more aggressive, like um, maybe some sort of like Night Stalker offlane uh, or something. Um, that is one thing. Yeah. Or Oracle, the the reason I kind of preference, I still feel that Oracle's, um, I still feel Oracle's overpowered. It just doesn't fit into this patch very well. Um, it seems to be rising popularity <laughs> though. The problem with it is Radiant that it's very easily Phoenix. overrun. So if you get a lot of aggressive heroes, Oracle can be pretty easy to deal with. Um, so, actually, I think it. Uh, no, 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 I take that back. It's not. It's not uh, Night Stalker. It's Dark Seer. Is probably Team Spirit's pickup. Then they have Vacuum Storm Hammer, which is an okay combo, but more specifically, they have the Earth Spirit Dark Seer lane, which puts a yep. lot of pressure on Vega. And they're going to have a good Ten combo, seconds, too, because the Earth Spirit will probably build into Veil of Discord, unless the Zeus feels like he's going to be building seconds, into that. Remain. But I know Earth Spirit's been pri more prioritizing that item. So you're going to have a lot of magical damage combining up with the physicals. They've got a nice Reserve blend time. of each. And, in, and Vega don't have the tankiest of lamps. Like, if they get their abilities off, if they do get the timing on the False Promise, then it's going to be difficult for Team Spirit to to get a quick pick. But if Team Spirit can catch him with the pants down, that's maybe, like, the one thing which Darkseer doesn't do. Like, he doesn't provide, like, initiation like a Nyx Assassin would, for example, yeah. uh, where you actually have that surprise attack. Also wondering, too, what Team Spirit's secondary support is going to be. Like if we start thinking about those big team fights, if we start thinking about uh, like big wombo combos, I'd actually go for the Batrider anyway, even if the Vegas Oracle is up. Um, so bat. it's just a question mark on the on the secondary support. Do you try and find like heavy amounts of stun? Lion's one of the first ones that come to my mind. There's that quick magical damage to pop off the Enchantress, but the damage is like the potential problem is Oracle Ten and his false promise. Remaining. He could just cancel off all that damage. Five seconds remaining. Batrider is still really good versus Enchantress. Um, and you're right. Reserve the time. option of the Darkseer would have left them... It would have been big on sustain, but it would have left them very low on initiation. Um, despite what people may think about Darkseer, he is not a very good... Um, he's, he's not a very good solo force for initiation. Yep. Right? Like oh, those old minutes. times where we ran Darkseer with Wombo Combo lineups... You know, if you're still thinking of that and going, what do you mean? Darkseer's great initiation. That's because there was always fo always follow up yep. um, to that Darkseer. Here, Team Spirit don't actually have that much follow up. It's not the easiest to execute, um, like the Five Wombo combos that we used remaining. to run. So uh, it would have been much more they of a sustained focus lineup where they would have had, like, maybe Mech, Guardian Greaves, maybe even a Pipe um, to consider, plus the War Cry. They would have just tried to make themselves as tanky as possible um, against Vega. But. Instead, they go the heavy, um, the heavy initiation route. It's really good versus Enchantress. It has a potential opening versus Puck, though that's really difficult. That hero has two abilities that instantly go off: Phase Shift as well as Ten Silence, that remaining. can beat a Bat Rider to his initiation. So, it's difficult there, Five but I think it's kind of the play remaining. that they had to do. There wasn't much left, yeah. um, unless they, like I said, did something <laughs> super, super aggro like Night Stalker. No real surprise. The Spectre is going to be the last one. They needed something manly enough that could go up against Sven, and they also needed sure. to have like that really solid core. Uh, uh, I, so I was going to say when I suggested Darkseer that it may be that Team Spirit actually go really greedy here. Um, in some sort of way to combat the Enchantress Beastmaster problem, because uh -huh. the way I'm looking at it, Sven plus one will never be able to deal with Beastmaster Enchantress, no matter like how good that support is. If they had, you know, their pick of the litter, it wouldn't have been good enough. So they do kind of go this greedier route. They're going to pick the Chen into the Enchantress, 
Um, this does still offer them the sustain that was kind of missing um, because they didn't go the dark seer, so they will have a mech hero. They will have a hero that can um, can provide some pushing power and general snowballing. It is going to be problematic, yes, that they have to deal with Enchantress, but then again, if they get this ball rolling fast enough, they can start pushing some tower do towers down uh, nice and early before. Because if you look at the supports, Oracle and Enchantress, they're not particularly good at responding to five-man pushes. Um, they, they really just aren't. And the only reason Enchantress is okay in this specific matchup is because she can steal a Chen creep. Did you hear about the bug with the Enchantress and the Chen? No. Synergy? So, um, if Enchantress is a creep, and yes. it gets dominated by the Chen... Uh, sorry, if any creep is dominated by the Chen and Enchantress tries to steal it, uh, it won't have any effect if uh, the Holy Persuasion is off cooldown. What? Yep. Enchantress can't steal a creep back again. Actually, I think the Chen's going to steal it first, and then the Enchantress tries to steal it back. If Holy Persuasion's off cooldown, she can't steal it. Swindles was telling me about this uh, before. When we, when we were so casting. as Chen, you have to dominate the creep from Enchantress to keep it permanently? Uh, only if your Holy Persuasion is off cooldown. It's a bug. Only if it's 30 off seconds cooldown. But yeah, battle. we only saw it ever inflict, like, change the gameplay once in the in, like, entire like finals that we were casting the with no diggity. Yeah, it's, it's what kind of weird-ass bug is that? Yeah, it's really odd. Uh, we didn't huh. fully understand it. Okay. FN... Okay, does he want to just run up to the top lane? For the moment, Team Spirit were hoping they'd find themselves a kill. Uh, all they're going to end up doing with this smoke maneuver is securing top rune. The battle yeah. begins. But That's okay, I don't think their their team... Well, uh, no, Ooh, I they found solo. Team uh, is pretty reliant on smokes. Wants to run away. Oh, oh no. Well off target. And actually puts Always Wanna Fly underneath the tower for a moment. With Fortune's End, Always Wanna Fly is going to be punished. For that mistake. And also, a not just him, but Iceberg as well. Yeah, he might as well not done the the extra boulder and might have just like slow rolled into the Enchantress. Just gotten got like in melee range. Because that was... Yeah. That was not good. That's, that's problematic. The reason why I'm worried about Iceberg then too is the fact that he's going to feel a little bit more pressured on that mid lane. He's got his bottle still pretty early because he got the rune, so he should be okay. Yeah. And this is cool. They're running like uh, a Batrider safe lane against Beastmaster, which uh, is top lane. relatively favorable. They're going to go on Seema, Stormbolt into Boulder. Seema, quick fortunes end, but it's not going to be quick enough. But with the Spectral Dagger flying out, the slow is enough to allow Seema to escape. He's going to Happy Tree Tango back up. So they're running a dual lane of Sven Earth Spirit against FN Spectre, which is a good way to try and. Um, keep the the Spectre down and stuff. They're going to have issues when Enchantress runs across, but... Gives Funic a lot better lane on bottom. Uh, like, this this is actually a, a terrible lane. And Gold Black as well, in a way. Yeah, true, because he could just rotate over. Yeah, because now the Enchantress is in bottom lane with the Beastmaster. He has to be top, so this frees up Gold Black. He doesn't have to worry about the Enchantress. Is Gold Black actually going to go for... Uh, this aggressive Observer Ward. This is... Now, what the... I think this... Because Team Spirit did exactly the same ward, but they did this ward because they were looking for a level 1 gank. Uh, this ward actually had to scout out the uh, smoke movement, at least the rotations of Gold Black. So Vega have a very early warning system to know when Gold Black is going to start rotating for them. Yeah, it's kind of cool. If they had run um, an aggro dual lane, Enchantress would be able to abuse that ward a lot by um, standing over the cliff and stealing Chen's creeps and stuff like that. In critical periods. So, but I think Goblack, for the most part, should be spending more of his time farming. Um, and Team Spirit play defensive at the top lane. Clearly, you see that's not what he's going for here. He is going to go for a smoke out, but I think this is. FN just uh, broke it. Yeah, I think hey, this he's is. He's picking the wrong, the wrong tree. I, I know. Uh, he's feeling the pressure to try and offset what he knows to be the Enchantress's pressure on that top lane. He knows that she's going to rotate over, Radiant's but I think it's unnecessary to. Uh, to worry about that too much. If, if he just farms to the max, right, and he picks up the fast mech, that will be a huge advantage. His four, for, four position over the Enchantress. Like, yeah. it, it'll be a gigantic uh, team fight advantage they can have. Instead, now we almost have this try on try lane up at the top. There's no Observer Ward this, uh, near that Sentry of Soul. In fact, they put it a lot further up in the lane. And that's what's giving Team Spirit 
the good information of exactly where these supports and obviously Enchantress are, so they can do exactly that. War always gonna fly. That kick was well off target. Fn's gonna go for the special dagger, but with the centaur stop from Goldblack. Oh, the centaur! Nah, I can't be stolen in time. Not from Solo. Goldblack's gonna burn out. Seema through the new cap, but there's not a lot of mana left. Over and always wanna fly as well as Illidan. So chasing for any more kills is not gonna happen. But you still traded your Chen for a Spectre. That's not a bad trade off for Team Spirit. No, no, not at all. Um, especially if Go Black wants to, uh, now that he's um, asserted some dominance over the top lane, he can head back to his own jungle. Ah, that's actually a really nice stun to Fortune's End. Uh, Spirit feeling a little too cocky. Oracle level 3. Very dangerous level for an Oracle. Because you get that uh, big 180 damage nuke. Have a look out on bottom lane. Mag's most definitely getting levels, but Funnick gets a full Radiant level in front of him, and the CS is 23 for 10 against now with the Axis kill there. 5 for 1. Yeah. No, this is definitely, uh, as I was saying, this is definitely a win for Team Spirit by running this aggro dual lane because it puts pressure Elden. on the Spectre and it frees up the bat. Centaur right Wallstorm's going to keep that Sven perfectly controlled with the stick charges. Maybe Ilden can survive, but no one rotates over, and with the orb, he kills off the Sven. Uh, Spirit just had to boulder himself away. Trigger the Dream Coil, but there was nothing Chen could do. He's not level 6 yet. There's no Hand of God. And that mech's still a very long way away. Yeah, Iceberg, he can't really rotate yet. He's not even level 6, so... Understandable that the Puck is able to have... They go um, for the kick. Rotation. Satter's over on Goldblack with the Troll Trapper as well. FN's going to be controlled long enough, almost for a second to Dukin, but... Not even required at the end of the day. As now that's the second death for our for our Spectre of FN. Yeah, I would say even with the Puck rotating top and getting those kills, I really think that Team Spirit's laning phase is working out. Funnick is going to have way more impact in this game than Mag will, just based off the laning phase. He's going to have that fast blink dagger. A fast blink dagger should lead, in, lead into uh, forced app and boots of travel pretty quickly as well so if they're drawing even at the top lane which they kind of are essentially they're trading cs between sven and specter they may be down a little bit in kills but it's at the cost of no one rotating out of mid lane so i i think this is good i think this is uh overall quite favorable for team spirit because they're drawing even in my opinion between top and mid and bottoms being heavily won easy refresh bottle Nice to balance at work. So Iceberg can actually even give Goblack Goblack some mana. What does he get? Invis rune for him. With Arcane Boots as well. Iceberg's actually having himself a really good time in mid. Obviously no one's rotations now put him a lot further ahead. As he's got the two kills to his name. But the movement's coming towards the north. Teen Spirit again bringing Goldblack to this top lane. It's like their, their priority is to make sure this Spectre doesn't get anything and Illidan still has a little bit of space to farm until Funnick has Blink and then rotations happen. And then Sven can at the bottom lane completely, but actually they're gonna... Yeah, Solo, smoke in behind. They start with a spatral dagger. Fortune's end follow up. The Hadouken Blast is still gonna be there. Illidan very, very tanky with that war cry, but they get through him. Iceberg's waiting for an opportunity of his own. He moved up towards this top lane, but he doesn't have enough damage to kill off anyone here on Vega. Yeah, he knows he has an opportunity still to be able to blow up one hero um, with his combo. But he's got to be careful of running into these counter wards. Solo's got nine stick charges. Uh, I'll make it 11. He's going to have a lot more life coming back to him. Not to mention they can't physically attack him down. So always when a fly got baited into an unfortunate position for himself. Actually giving no one now his fourth kill of the game. Their refusal to just like lit top B. You know, if, they, if they're responding to some of these ganks and they're occasionally killing FN but trading kills, that's all fine, well, and good. But it seems like they almost feel the, the pressure to, like, win top lane, which is normal in most aggro tri lane scenarios. But again, bottoms being won so heavily that uh, that pressure really shouldn't exist. They should be happy with just going even. Um, I think they're they're trying too hard to make something happen at, uh, something happen at top lane. Mag's moving over towards the mid lane. So top lane for Vega is uh, withstanding the punches. No one's feeling great. Dream calls off cooldown in one second time, and Mag wants to use his raw. With his 10 stick charges, he'll be able to do it. And he walks in range of the trees, expecting someone to be hit in there. Yeah, bad time to rotate. That was the rune timing as well. Like, you'd yeah. expect uh, Zeus to move off the lane. 
Yeah, exactly. And he's never going to head to Radiance bottom rune unless he feels down. like there's going to be too many me uh, members of Vega at the top rune. So. You still get both runes. The Observer Ward, which is down now from Team Spirit, will see that rotation coming. So Funnick should have been very, very aware of this. He's going to get Dream called up. The Spectral Haunt's going to come in. Maybe not so essential there from FN. He actually reality down for that. So now we've got four players from Vega on bot lane after Funnick was pretty much a guaranteed kill. Yeah, there's just a lot of uh, small mistakes happening right here from Team Spirit. Again, they should have limited some of the, the deaths at top lane. They shouldn't have lost their Batrider here until he had his Blink Dagger. Um, these little things, you, you may not feel like as a casual observer, like, oh, what's the difference between Blink Dagger, you know, at, um, at nine and a half minutes and instead being at 11 and a half or 12 minutes. You may not feel like that, that uh, sounds like a whole lot, but many of these timings are very precise. And the Batrider is more so than most because of the because of the fact that he's the big beneficiary of this laning phase. He's supposed to be able to offset some of the disadvantages that Team Spirit are facing, such as Iceberg having, you know, a little bit of a hard time at mid lane or top lane, you know, not being totally free farm for this fan. The Batrider is supposed to be the one who offsets that. I spoke using his Arcane rune, considering uh, Thunder Ghost Rider's coming off cooldown, he wasn't quite sure where Vega was. Yeah. Like, look at this timing right here. Nine and a half minutes, he should have his Blink Dagger. Nine and a half minutes, he should be a threat at that middle lane push. They shouldn't be able to, fee to have the confidence to push that mid lane like they did. But because they ganked the Batrider and set back his Blink Dagger, they're able to take the arguably the most important Tier 1 tower in the game. And if they could take now the Tier 1 tower bottom lane as well, then they're they're going to continue to limit the, the Batrider on his Blink Dagger by ideally ganking him right now. And then they're also going to take over the Radiant Jungle. Fortune's end's beginning. Funnick will go into the tree lines. They get hit by this. That's gonna have, they're going to have to get very, very deep for that kill if they want it. And with the risk of TP support in the way, not to mention a haste rune Zeus. A little bit too dangerous. And they're going to give no one the top lane now. He, but yeah, he's going to back out. He got the Blink Dagger. He only needed it for a half a second to get the last bit of money. His net worth is still like a full thousand in front of the Zeus. Like I know Zeus has a lot of like, like pop combo available. Um, Vega's getting into a better and better position as each minute passes. This Spectre is like exactly where he wants to be. Like Thunder Ghost Rider's gonna trigger off and like at least lets them see where Vega is. Here you got Spectral Horn off, you got Phase Boots drum, not full drum, sorry, just the Bracer, as well as an Urn. Everything a Spectre wants to have 11 minutes into the game. Yeah. Good time for Vega to go for their smoke while the uh, cooldown from Thunder God's Wrath. Team Spirit thought they were already smoked up, Radiance but that wasn't the case. They're going to head down to bottom lane. An invasion into the Radiant Jungle is pretty normal around the 10 minute mark. Funnick's already left though. It looks like uh, yeah. Team Spirit is also grouping up for their own smoke. The other thing is the Radiant Jungle is really easy to invade because there's a natural flow to it, right? You go from the lane all the way through. So even if you're playing pretty deep in the Radiant Jungle, you could maneuver. still be caught. Solo, there's a reveal. No one, a three-man coil as well as a three-man silence. Funnick's being focused down by Solo, so there's going to be no lasso in this fight. And FN's all over it. Thanks to that Spectral Horn. Iceberg, kick, kick a little bit off target for at least that chasing hero. So it ends up being a two for one, gonna make it Morris, no one. Triple kill actually for FN's gonna arrive. Solo's finally gonna pop, actually he committed suicide at the last moment there. On the back of the Fortune M, but FN will pay, take an ultra kill from this. So I think how that works is that Enchantress was low enough um, that he was able to... Um, he ha did he have some sort of status effect on him? At he, had, he had fortunes end on him, and that was all. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. Uh, I'm I'm not completely clear on uh, how false promise interacts. Um, I do sometimes feel like there's bugs. I I'm not sure about that interaction, how it occurred. You know, like how do you get a denial out unless like you do the last point of damage which would tick you over at the very end yeah but i don't even know how you would do that because there's no status effects from yeah. team spirit there's yeah. no like poison or something that will allow you to be able to do that unless the chen army had something i, I didn't see all of the creeps that were there like you had the set of purge that was going on but oh you know what's pretty funny uh 
they need to change Winter's Curse. I've had it, so I've Winter Cursed someone, and I brought him really low, and I also Splinter Blasted um, right as Winter's out. Curse ran out. Yeah. And it brought him down to, like, a sliver of HP. And one more of his allied auto attacks, even though Winter's Curse was gone, one of his allied uh, auto attacks was still going. Yep. After the Winter's Curse was gone, but it was still mid-air, and it hits the enemy, and it causes a, a denial rather than a kill from Winter's Curse. Really unfortunate stuff. I know that if, if that should even be really patched out, though. Like, it's, it's not a bug, it's just, like, how the interaction would nah, work. Nah, I think Winter's Curse is... I spoke step. FN. Man, he really is not holding back off this Spectral Horn. Is he going to reality to Illidan? Nope. They actually stay up on top lane. Didn't realize he always want to fly. Try to come in to help out his teammate. At the end, you notice we're back up this score line. The exact same score line we had earlier tonight. 3 to 13. The difference was it was Navi in Team Spirit's position. This is just like domination across all lanes. The rotation has worked out perfectly. And this Ven, the hero who is renowned for not being able to really play from behind, is currently playing from behind. The raw, well, she flies out from Mag. I was just keeping Illidan off that Ancients, but damn, the Oracle arrives. Four <laughs> points up in the Purifying Flames. Fat Rider gets bursted down. You're 15 minutes into this game. You've only lost two tier one towers, but you practically lost the game at this point. Yeah, I'm fairly certain this game's over because it's a, um, it's a solo, solo carry Sven. You'll see a lot of teams, the way that they run Sven is oftentimes going to be with another semi carry or carry in the mid lane or maybe off lane. Maybe they'll run like Lone Druid or something as an off lane. In this game, though, it's a it's a solo carry, right? He's got Batrider, who's utility, and Zeus, who's kind of like a s magic damage semi carry late game, just due to some of the scaling that happens. But he's not going to be the primary damage dealer ever. Um, so it's up to Sven to do everything. But the problem is that Sven is uh, highly dependent on ancient stacking. It, it's actually it's worth so much of your time to block out an Ancient stack because Sven is uh, so greedy because he requires that because he requires to be ahead of you by like a thousand, three thousand, four thousand gold. Uh -huh. He's just one of those heroes. He's kind of like an alchemist. Not quite the same, but you know, if you're on even grounds with the Sven, oh. especially on your support, Solo. you're happy. Seam is so close to him. Thunder Gods Ryan's going to trigger off and Solo. Well, there's the Fortune's end. Lancey will instantly take it out in this fight. The Raw onto Earth Spirit and then your Sans plus Dream Coil. The Spectral Horn creates such chaos here. And Team Spirit, well, Illidan's in the middle of this one. He's getting completely brought down by that Impetus damage. Mag's right behind him. There it is. A double kill for Seema. That almost looked like a, you know what, guys? I don't think we've really got control of this game kind of play. We need to smoke. We need to find a kill. We need to get back into this somehow. And then you lose, like, both your supports and your primary cause. So not going to fall even further behind. Yeah. It, it's and pretty surprising to me. Too as well. uh, not, like, it's not surprising that this is happening because obviously we've, see, we've seen the history, like the 3 0 by Vega Squadron like a week ago when they matched up. But it is kind of surprising to me that that original 3 0 happens in the first place. Because if six months ago you told me Vega Squadron are going to swap out Pasha for FN and Team Spirit would be able to get their hands on both Funnick and Illidan. Yep. Uh, I would have told you Team Spirit would very easily be the better roster at that point in time because I thought Pasha was uh, a pretty damn good carry and I think that the additions of Funnick and Goldblack are really good for Team Spirit. I, I thought I was like, when I saw that, I was like, damn, you know, losing Ramses, that sucks because that guy's super good. But you get some really experienced players between these two. But uh, clearly... This hasn't actually managed to be a dream roster for Team Spirit, and Vega Squadron continue to be the uh, the dominant team between these two. And these are t two of your kind of like, I'm not, I'm not going to call them like junior CIS teams, but you kind of get what I mean, right? Just because yeah. of their, um, just because they're like organizations, I guess, are kind of the junior in well, a way. They're kind of like just because the, they always like in the shadow of Navi. Yeah, Empire, they're always in the VP. shadow of the big three: the VP, Navi, and Empire. So, but, um, you know, they, they're essentially oftentimes like growing grounds for, for some more junior CIS Radiant's players, but the, you know, then they got their hands on such big, uh, big veteran names. 
and it still doesn't seem to change. Team Spirit are still secondary to Vega Squadron uh, because this is very clearly going to be one zero. I, I, like, there's just no way to come back from it. You look at the net worth. You can try and make it like as as open as you want and try and pose like, oh, Team Spirit can you know try and come back through these ways. But the the simple fact is that Team Spirit's old strategy it just failed, and and that's the that's like the really important part. The Dota is very much um, a strategic game, more, more so than I think many people realize. Like the, the me individual plays, the mechanics, the what pro players refer to as like kind of like the button pushing uh, of Dota, like that that actually comes so secondary to what the overarching strategy is. And the important thing is here, Vega Squadron executed their strategy. They they did so when they came on. Like the laning phase was relatively like even, I would say, but. When Vega Squadron came online, they moved around the map. They made things happen. They set up kills for the Spectre, uh, and they're like just snowballing from here. Then they they took away that ancient stack. That's super important for for the spend. And now they're just establishing like overall movement and map control. Like if you look at their movement, the way that they took that early tier one tower because of the fact that they uh, just before that ganked the Batrider. You know that sets them up for the middle tower. That then then sets um, them up to be able to rotate from middle tower to push down bottom tower. They take over the radiant and jungle from there like these are all like chess pieces in a way that you're setting up checkmate against team spirit because they have no good avenues to come back in this game now god uh, spirit so quick to die they actually burnt one of their tps as well i think that was i think that was actually iceberg who was trying to come up and tp quickly and, and again you you look at this and you're like man team spirit just look look really lost right now it looks like they don't know what to do it's because they don't it's because they they know like from a strategic aspect that they don't have any more windows. Yeah, look how far Solo's even coming in. Like he doesn't he doesn't even care. He's forcing out abilities. So then so, so you have no one do exactly this. The perfect silence. There's no real way that Illidan, uh, Iceberg can actually pump off any real damage at this point. You buy back on the Bat Rider and Vega are gonna back out of here. Seema still got False Promise available. Can actually get the last hit? No, he False Promises up. The roar from Mag. They just nuke down this vent. And the Necrobooks are still on the field. In fact, no one's going to go back in again. He's got his one charges available. He's also got orb up. So even with the pure the, the perch coming out from the two sided banishes of Goldblack, like you repel Vega, you actually end up getting the kill on the Oracle, which was nice. But it was a one for one trade off after you just lost most of your top lane towers and a fair chunk of your tier three. And we're 20 minutes in. You know what the push. funniest part of that was? Did you watch the almost died to the cleave hit? <laughs> it, like the Sven hit the Oracle, right? Yeah, there it is. There Team it is. Spirit called GG. Um, Probably so. And and again, I really want to em em emphasize this to the casual viewer who's like, why are they GGing out? Like they have, uh, you know, all their bases up. You know, why don't you play it out to the end? Why don't you like at least fight until you lose a lane? Because you need a win situation. Yeah, and again, there's there's no win condition here for for Team Spirit. Vega Squadron won this game like 10 minutes ago. Their play from nine and a half minutes to 12 minutes was the, the strategic moves by Vega Squadron that set up Checkmate, essentially. And Team Spirit, like, they, they were floundering there for, for the last, like, eight or so minutes because they knew they had lost that ground and they weren't sure how to be able to come back from there because they knew they had been dealt such